friends, this video on respiration in plants part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we will have an overall conclusion on glycolysis that as a result of this process, how much of energy has been produced. So before we do that, let us quickly look at the entire 10 steps at a glance. So this is where it all started from, glucose. So from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate, so here ATP got converted to ADP. Again from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate, then fructose 1,6-diphosphate and then two products were formed which were isomers of each other. In the next step, this product was also converted into this product. So you had two molecules of this one. Again, this got converted into this while with release of ATP, which again got converted into 2 phosphoglycerate, which upon hydrolysis formed PEP, that is phosphoenol pyruvate, and which finally formed pyruvic acid. So, now if you look at the entire process of glycolysis, let us look at what all is been produced, what are the products formed out of the entire process of glycolysis. So, one glucose molecule was the reactant or the starting material was one glucose molecule and one glucose molecule resulted in all these things. So how many ATP were utilized throughout the process? Now one ATP was utilized in step number one. Again one ATP was utilized in step number three. So total two ATP molecules were utilized. Right? So these many ATP were utilized. Now let us see how many ATP were released and where. Okay, so two molecules of ATP were released in step number seven. Again, two molecules of ATP were released in step 10, that is the last step, this step. So total ATP released were four. So these were the ATP released. Now two ATP were utilized and four ATP were released. So what can you say? Net ATP utilized. Net ATP released. I'm sorry. Net ATP released will be four minus two. That is two. So net two molecules of ATP were formed during glycolysis. So this was the story of ATP. But even other than ATP also few other things were formed. For example, NADH released. So how many NADH were released? Two NADH were released in step number six. Again, water was also released during the process of hydrolysis in this step. So water was also released. So H2O released. How many H2O were released? Two molecules of H2O were released and that happened in step nine. And of course, the final product that is pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid was released and how many molecules of pyruvic acid? Two molecules of pyruvic acid in step number 10 because that, is the, that was the final product, right? Now, how are all these things going to get utilized? Now, ATP is ATP. I mean, that is our aim in the, throughout the process of respiration that we have to generate ATP molecules. So, few ATP molecules got generated in the first step of respiration that is glycolysis. Now, NADH, whatever got released here, this NADH will get converted into ATP molecules or they will be utilized for ATP synthesis towards the last step of respiration. So, that is how this will get utilized. What about the pyruvic acid? This pyruvic acid is going to get utilized in the next step of respiration. Because after glycolysis, the next step is pyruvate oxidation. So there pyruvic acid is going to get utilized. If you talk about H2O, if you look at the process of res respiration, H2O is released as a byproduct of the process. So that is how all the products of glycolysis are utilized in the process of respiration. Right? So I hope you are clear with the process of glycolysis. Okay. So now the question is what follows glycolysis? What's going to happen next? As a result of glycolysis, the main product which was formed in glycolysis is pyruvic acid. 
Now the question is how can we utilize pyruvic acid further? Now there are two ways by which pyruvic acid can be utilized. One is aerobic respiration and the other is fermentation. So fermentation is basically a, a sort of anaerobic res respiration where the process of respiration will happen in absence of oxygen. Now you might be wondering that now we are studying aerobic respiration only. So why the segregation? That's because the step glycolysis is common for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So the first step will always be glycolysis. As soon as we eat food or as soon as the plant prepares food and glucose reaches each and every cell of the plant, the first step will be glycolysis. That is glucose will get converted to pyruvic acid. After that, either the pyruvic acid will go through the steps of aerobic respiration or it will go through fermentation. So now we will talk about the remaining steps of aerobic respiration first. Correct. So we are going to talk about in presence of oxygen. What is going to happen? Now as I mentioned earlier that since glycolysis is done the next step for aerobic respiration will be pyruvate oxidation. Now this entire aerobic respiration is again a multi-step process which I have mentioned before. It had four steps, glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. Now currently we have already discussed about glycolysis so we know what is glycolysis. As a result of glycolysis, pyruvic acid is formed. So now we will discuss about the remaining three steps that is pyruvate oxidation, Krebs cycle and electron transport chain. And please remember that this step is common for both aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. So now the question is where does aerobic respiration take place? So when I say aerobic respiration, the first step glycolysis, it takes place in the cytoplasm that we all know. So the next step is pyruvate oxidation. So where will this take place? Will it take place in the cytoplasm itself or it will take place somewhere else? So let us try to understand that. Now as I mentioned earlier, photosynthesis results in the formation of glucose in the leaves. From leaves it gets transported through the flown tubes to different parts of the plant, that is to different cells of the plant. Now there in the cytoplasm, so this is the cytoplasm, so here glycolysis takes place. So cytoplasm takes place, I mean glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. Now this process of pyruvate oxidation, it takes place in the mitochondria. So here you can see the organelle mitochondria. So this is the place where pyruvate oxidation will take place. So this process will take place in the mitochondria of the cells. You know what is mitochondria? It is the powerhouse of the cell which is known for ATP synthesis. We spoke about it while we were talking about the lesson on cell. We said mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell because they can generate energy. They can generate ATP. So here you will see that how exactly energy gets generated in mitochondria. Correct? Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.